Hello and welcome to Easy Learning Economics. I am Dr. Kaval. Today we shall learn the solo growth model. This solo growth model is also called the solo swan model or exogenous growth model. Now the question arises that why solo growth model is also called the solo swan model because the Robert Solo and Trevor Swan introduced new classical growth theory in 1956. Solo brought together the long run economic growth model and estimated the separate effect of labor, capital and technological change on the economic growth. Solo's exogenous growth model predicts the growth in the long run can only be achieved through technological progress. In the Solo's model, the unexplained change in growth of output after accounting for the capital accumulation is called Solo's residual. Residual measure is an exogenous increase in the total factor of productivity during particular time period. This is the brief introduction of Solo's growth model. Now we shall understand the Solo growth model in detail with the help of graph. Solo's model is advanced version of the Herodomer growth model. Here I would like to suggest you to understand solo growth model in detail in clear way you must check out the links given in the description box. Harold Domer growth model did criticism over the Rostos third stage takeoff that country can never reach in the third stage of takeoff until and unless the saving rate of country is, is greater than 15 to 20 percent of national income. However, the solo agrees that the savings are essential to economic development and growth. Solo has extended the Harrod Domer model and allows the substitution of labor and capital subject to diminishing return during this process. Y is function of capital that shows the output per worker and this is the capital per worker shown on the x axis that is k and this is the, the output with decreasing function it means when the capital is increased the total production initially increases with decreasing tendency. This blue line is showing the n plus sigma that is depreciation. This depreciation is directly linked with the capital per worker that is k as the capital increases the depreciation will also increase so depreciation is directly linked with the amount of capital available in the economy so this is the saving saving is function of the capital if more capital is employed in the economy then production will increase the unemployment will be reduced in economy will reach to the full employment level and production will increase and the saving will also increase. So, saving is function of capital. This is the point where saving and investments are equal and K star is the steady equilibrium of economy which the Harrod Domer model failed to explain. This concave shape showing production increases with decreasing rate which reflects diminishing return to capital per worker while the concave shape is upward sloping under the Harrod Domer growth model. The aggregate production function assumes constant returns to scale hold. This is the Cobb Douglas production function which assumes constant returns to scale. We have considered this Cobb Douglas production function to understand the production function. Q is the output and F is the function. A is the productivity or technological change and K is the showing the amount of capital and L is showing the amount of labor whereas the alpha and beta these are the elasticity of labor and capital. Solo's model further assumes that saving and investments are equal as the case here you have seen that this is the point where saving and investments are equal and economy is in a steady state of equilibrium of K store. This model also assumes that labor market is in equilibrium and single product is produced. There is perfect computation in the market. This is the Cobb Douglas production function A K alpha L1 minus alpha. We have discussed in detail in the previous lecture. If you want to know about the Cobb Douglas production function, you can check out the link in the description box. The total capital stock 
increases when savings are greater than depreciation but capital per worker increases when savings are greater to provide the same amount of capital to new worker it means the capital stock this is the capital stock this will only increase when savings are greater than depreciation you can see here that at this point the savings are greater than depreciation so the capital stock will only increase when savings are greater than depreciation but the availability of the capital per worker is said to increase when the same amount of capital is also provided to the new workers the growth of capital depends upon saving function after deducting the depreciation amount and the same required amount of capital to new worker so this can be expressed in the form of equation that change in k it means the change in capital is equals to the saving function minus alpha plus n is the depreciation and the amount of capital to the new workers this is the k store represent the level of capital per worker when the economy is in steady state if k is higher or lower the economy will return to k store thus k store is a stable equilibrium to the left of k store this is the k store to the left of k store you can see here that the saving function lies above the depreciation change in capital is greater than zero as a result k in the economy rises towards the k store equilibrium point to the right of k store here uh, depreciation n plus sigma k is greater than saving function you can see here the depreciation curve lies above the saving function as a result the change in k is less than zero and k capital per worker in the economy shrinks towards the equilibrium point k store while in the herat domer model saving is function of capital is a straight line subject to condition that saving function k lies above the depreciation and growth continues as long as the saving function lies above the depreciation herodomer model states once the savings lies above the depreciation the growth continues to exist solo's model has a single equilibrium income per worker it means the capital will only increase if the amount of savings exceeds the depreciation amount and capital labor ratio or the capital per worker is said to grow by giving the same amount of capital to new worker if saving is greater than depreciation then capital is greater than zero if saving is less than depreciation the capital is less than zero here in this diagram we shall understand the long run effect of changing the saving rate in solo's model due to increase in saving when stock of capital per worker increases it does not assures economic growth in the long run but it provides a new equilibrium and consequently per capita income increases if this saving function increases then it does not means the economic growth as it was in the herat domer model but here case is different you can see here now it is states that in the long run economy can meet steady steady equilibrium with the help of market demand and supply curve you can see here that the saving rises the dotted and other lines saving function of k s shows that the saving are higher than depreciation and savings are greater than the amount of depreciation and save increase savings also provide the same amount of capital to new workers now the economy changes its equilibrium positions from k stars to k double star new state of equilibrium is now is k double star solos added if saving increases it does not assures growth in the long run period as the other factors including the government policies can affect the saving and growth so he described developed economy is better economy than developing economy thus the country 
with higher saving rate converts to higher equilibrium income per worker. I hope Solo's model it would be clear to all of you. If you have any queries or questions or comments, please ask in the comment section. Thanks for watching.